Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So it is Sunday today, guys, and I thought we'd have a little bit of fun today. Got some interesting articles and some intriguing observations by the XRP community. First, let's just start this off by taking a look at the crypto market right now. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to spend too much time on this today because the crypto market is fairly flat. Nothing really to write home about Bitcoin trading at 19,100 as it has been for the last, um, I mean, I feel it's, it feels like it's been trading in and around 18,9, 19,1, 19,2 maybe for the last month and a half. Um, you guys can see here, not a lot of volume, not a lot of price movement. My concern is that we are doing something like we saw back in 2018 when we saw Bitcoin price just kind of settle down in and around here. And then seemingly out of nowhere off a cliff, right? And uh, looking at the calendar, this happened in November uh, and November is right around the corner. So it is something that I definitely have my eye on. Uh, Bitcoin did go down another 50% after at this time, what we thought was probably the bottom. It took another couple of months before we saw a swing to the upside. But I mean, I guess that is the worst case scenario. Um, Bitcoin has been holding $20,000 for quite a while. On the positive side, it is forming what is looking like a double bottom as I've mentioned in the past, and uh, you know, usually a double bottom means a continuation pattern to the upside. Bringing up XRP real quick here, XRP trading at 45.3, still forming what is looking like that bullish pennant pattern on the one day chart. Um, and crypto market guys at 919 billion. So above the $800 billion mark, Bitcoin dominance hanging on at 40%. And you can see here, um, you know, the top cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin down about 0.14, Ethereum down 0.05. Not a lot of movement, even BNB coin down 0.14. XRP is actually uh, the biggest mover to the downside, 1.85. And you guys can see that number is fluctuating uh, in the last 24 hours. All in all, though, not too much to discuss with regards to price. The quest for XRP clarity continues. James K. Filan here bringing this uh, latest update from the SEC lawsuit. The SEC has submitted for in-camera review by Magistrate Judge Netburn proposed redactions to two drafts of Hinman's June 2018 speech that discuss pending determinations before the SEC. And JV here on Twitter bringing up some facts with regards to uh, what the SEC believes uh, with regards to Ripple sales, the facts presented by the SEC on Ripple sales for XRP and ODL, even with Ripple possessing Hinman's documents now, it's still kind of hard to think of a settlement that would satisfy the SEC that allows Ripple to continue its current selling strategy of XRP. So um, he was dissecting this document here, taking a look at some of these highlighted points that I just wanted to bring up with regards to their argument here. Um, and you know, yesterday we did talk a little bit about settlement, a lot more information did come out. If you guys didn't catch yesterday's video, I will link it up here in the top right hand corner. Ripple's recitation of facts is also woefully incomplete with respect to the ODL product, which came into existence in 2018. Okay. So this is the SEC's uh, point of view here and permits users to exchange fiat currencies by buying and selling XRP. The banks and financial institutions that Ripple refers to as customers did not use ODL. For most of that time, a single entity, MoneyGram International, or MGI, made more than 90% of the ODL transactions. So this is around the time that MoneyGram uh, signed that partnership with Ripple. Uh, Ripple paid MoneyGram significant amounts to use ODL. Down here, he highlights, moreover, Ripple did not sell XRP to ODL users until it began some sales in mid-2020. But concerned that these sales depressed the market for XRP, Ripple used proceeds from the sales to buy back the XRP it had just sold. I don't know if they can quantify that with uh, any kind of supportive evidence. A bit of a ludicrous remark nonetheless, the statement that $10 billion in payments have been made in ODL is a non sequitur because all it shows is that parties bought and resold XRP in the secondary market. This activity is not payment activity. This figure is further misleading because of an uh, infinitesimal part, 0.12% of the trillions of dollars in total XRP trading volume. Finally, at its inception, XRP had no market, no price, and no use. Defendants cannot dispute that. In contrast to Ripple's $22 million in software sales in that same period from 2013 to 2020, Ripple offered a directly and indirectly, Ripple offered and directly and indirectly sold public markets more than 24 billion units of XRP for more than $1.5 billion in cash and $609 million in other revenue. It was this capital raised through selling XRP, not the limited software sales, that allowed Ripple to grow. Simply put, Ripple's main business model slash source of income is XRP sales. Well, that's very contestable. I'm sure Ripple has a lot of documentation suggesting otherwise. Thanks to JV though, just uh, for bringing that up. 24 hours a day in continuous XRP sales 
up to 400 million plus the luxury of being a founder and CEO. Uh, just bringing up another point here with regards to some of the contracts, guys. I'm not going to go over uh, a lot of this today. I felt like I did a, a big legal video yesterday, and uh, I will link this in the description, though, if you want to uh, keep track of what is going on with regards to the lawsuit. Um, I am going to still touch on some things that are going on right now, though. Just complimenting the lawsuit, really. Eleanor Turret uh, posting this. Another application for an amicus brief has been filed, guys, on behalf of Ripple. This time it is from Spend the Bits. Now this wallet, I love it. You can basically send Bitcoin instantly over the XRPL. They use the XRPL as the backend uh, mechanism to send cryptocurrency. So um, who needs the Lightning Network as everybody is saying. The Spend the Bits wallet utilizes the XRP ledger and that technology, that DLT technology to send, for example, Bitcoin payments. And they have just entered a brief as well. Spend the Bits is a nonprofit foreign company based out of Alberta, Canada and soon launching in El Salvador that utilizes the open source blockchain technology of the XRP ledger to send and receive Bitcoin within seconds, easily and inexpensively. The main focus is to provide interoperable multi-currency payment solutions around the globe. Uh, transferring Bitcoin on a Bitcoin network can take anywhere uh, from 10 minutes to one hour, depending on the network traffic. With Spend the Bits, it takes five seconds to complete the transaction on the XRP ledger. As a business that relies on XRP and the XRPL, as a vital piece of its operation, Spend the Bits not only has an interest in the outcome of this litigation, but its use case also disproves the SEC's allegations that investors in XRP cannot take most or any of the steps that Ripple has taken to grow the XRP ecosystem. Most, if not all, XRP investors simply lack the technical expertise and the resources to do so, nor are XRP investors in any position to increase significantly demand or value for XRP by developing a use for the token through entrepreneurial efforts, at least not without Ripple's support. So Spend the Bits also coming out uh, supporting Ripple with their amicus brief. Bill here posting about this, feeling real good since I read the latest amicus brief in the SEC versus Ripple lawsuit and discovered how Bitcoin can be transferred more quickly on the XRP ledger than the Bitcoin network. These are facts, not hype. So Spend the Bits designed an application to transfer Bitcoin on the decentralized open source blockchain technology of the XRP ledger without Ripple's knowledge, consent or assistance. I think that is the biggest thing here. It's open, it's permissionless. Anybody can build on the XRP ledger. Nobody needs Ripple's permission because XRP is the native token of the XRP. I'll spend the bits uses XRP in this operation uh, of its application. The app is designed to burn 0. 0.00005 XRP with each transaction, uh, which takes just three to five seconds to complete. Booyah, another amicus filed, uh, this time with Spend the Bits. And so, you know, they keep piling up. I'm feeling like because of this, the SEC is losing credibility every single day. And I mean, you guys probably remember this. If you don't, I'm going to play you guys this clip. With regards to settlement, the people who present it as a fact that there will be no settlement, you don't have to take my word for it. In the end, it's as simple as Stuart Alderati and how he explained it a couple of weeks ago. Basically, guys, settlement is still on the table. Here's Stuart Alderati explaining just that. This case settles if the SEC makes clear that Ripple sales and distributions of XRP and XRP's trading in the secondary market does not constitute a security. If they're willing to acknowledge that, the case settles and settles very, very quickly. And so, I mean, those stipulations have not really changed. Uh, they've been the same since the beginning, even in 2020. And I think this was documented that uh, Ripple actually did want to settle with the SEC. Settlement talks were on the table at that time. And, uh, you know, even from two years ago, the conditions had not changed. Basically, we need to be able to distribute XRP and for it not to be considered the sale of a security. And uh, I think Ripple's sticking to their guns there. Want to keep moving, guys? Flare token distribution event. Flare will be decentralized on or around October the 24th. We heard about our airdropped uh, uh, Spark tokens anywhere between the 24th and November 6th, I believe the dates were. Well, Jungle Inc. posted this. Hugo canceling Christmas this year. Airdrop January 23rd. Uh, this is from a Flare release. They envisage all the exchanges being ready within the next month, but with international end of year celebrations, a TDE around the 9th of January 23 may be deemed the optimal path for the fairest and most inclusive distribution. So does that mean that we're not going to get our Flare or 15% between October or November? Or is this the rest of the FLR tokens? Good question. Some people down in this tweet thread a little confused. Does this mean uh, <laughs> the Ripple, Ripple XRP case will settle on January 23rd? And no, this has nothing to do with the Ripple SEC case, um, but they are throwing more dates around here. January 2023, January 9th specifically, 
2023 for the fairest and most inclusive distribution. Somebody actually posted a uh, <laughs> funny little um, poll on Twitter asking, who are the kings of delays? <laughs> Is it Flare Networks or the SEC? <laughs> And uh, I didn't actually vote on it, didn't look at the results, but thought it was kind of funny. Um, anyway, latest update from the Flare Network. Wanted to thank XRP underscore Crow and Jungle Inc. just for posting that. Now, did you guys notice Tony Valentino has a new profile? He's back on Twitter and has been back since March of 2021. Hasn't really been making posts, though, uh, since about May of this year. He kind of opened this up very quietly. His first message, as I type this message, we are watching in real time the next phase of the story. This from May of 2022. Notice that the chess pieces are being moved into place simultaneously. There will be storms ahead. Hold strong because XRP will be the answer. The Phoenix will rise. And so if you believe in the theories, you also likely believe that this has been, this plan has been in motion by world elites for decades now. Just one hour ago, Tony uh, posted this. They only pumped these markets higher in 2008 to buy time. Now, uh, one of the things that I should mention was the housing crisis of 2008. And at that time, uh, a lot of economists were saying already by this point that the writing was on the wall and that uh, the system was broken. They ended up propping it up, and then we had an historic bull run for global markets. This is the S&P 500 on the daily, uh, and this was the 2000-2008 housing crisis, as you guys can see. The biggest collapse uh, at the time, market did go down about 56%, at least the S&P did. But then an historic run, one last hurrah for these guys to make money. Tony says the new system was under construction, longest bull market in history made possible by share buybacks. Companies buying their own stocks, fake markets will correct to fair value. They are ready. Everything has been set up. Major banking and payment software providers are all integrated. XRP bailouts have been distributed OTC. This all comes down to a flip the switch moment. It's all about timing. There is no rush right now. They need a little pain and panic first. I, for one, am happy that Tony Valentino is back on Twitter. So wanted to thank him just for uh, giving us his two cents on this. I mean, he has been accurate in the past when predicting some of these things. I don't know if you guys were in the XRP community back in 2019. Some of his cryptic posts got us scratching our heads. And then uh, months later, we were all like, whoa, how the heck did this guy know this? Moving along, guys, this is from Michael Branch, FTX, okay? Gonna focus on them for a second. They are funding or helping to fund PACs, PAC's planned fury of ads and lead up to the midterm elections. So just a little synopsis here, a web of political action committees funded by FTX or Sam Bankman-Fried and other crypto leaders are reportedly planning an 11th hour surge in advertising for the 2022 midterm elections. Citing an unnamed strategist, CNBC reported Friday, that super PACs, uh, Web3 Forward, and Crypto Innovation are planning to spend six figures on advertising in the midterm elections. These ad campaigns is set to begin in two weeks. So basically lobbying. It's interesting that Sam Bankman-Fried is uh, headlining this article as the biggest FTX digital markets. The organization has received over $11 million from donors, including Bankman-Fried, Circle, as well as investments from Paradigm, A16Z, and Multicoin. Hmm, all very interesting. Considering this, Darren Moore brought this up all of a sudden, and think about this for a second, FTX just appeared. I don't remember a natural progression. It just came on the scene and it was a behemoth. Do you remember FTX existing in 2018, 2019? Do you remember when they were a small company and grew to a behemoth? Neither do I and neither does Darren Moore here. Jamil Kay's down here saying, BlackRock, go see the VCs fronting this dude. Hmm, founded in 2019 and in 2020, they were buying Blockfolio for $150 million. So it's interesting to see the progression. I mean, I know it is crypto, and I know some of these companies can grow very fast, very quickly, but I'm inclined to believe that there's a lot of fuel, i.e. money, being poured on these uh, companies to ignite them to become just that, behemoths, as uh, Darren Moore points out here. So then I got to think to myself, you know, how much of this is orchestrated? How much of it is a natural progression? And how many of these companies have been planned from the beginning, even if the optics don't seem like that? Even just going back to Tony Valentino here, the UN will take over. They will give the backing for XRP to be the world currency. IMF will take control of the XRP escrow, and this will be a complete financial revamp, uh, a new world government, centralized law from the UN. IMF is the central bank of the central banks to dictate global monetary policy. And so is this what they're getting us ready for? 
As you guys know, Liz Truss just announced that she would be resigning after 44 days, and I recently did a video on the number 44 if you guys are interested. I'll link it up here in the top right hand corner. And Times Prompter here posting this, I found more signs and proof that next week, starting October the 24th, which is tomorrow guys, Monday, will begin a new phase of the Great Reset. Rishi Sunak is coming. He will bring in new regulations with him, ushering the CBDC era on October the 28th. Will Rishi be up to stop the collaboration? And uh, this is a tweet from Tobias Elwood, MP in the UK. The free market experiment is over. It's been a low point in our party's great history. The reset begins. Time for centrist, stable, fiscal, responsible government, offering credible domestic and international leadership. Honored to be the 100th Tory PM to support. Ready for Rishi. And uh, sure enough, Rishi, part of the World Economic Forum. Now, he is said to be uh, running in the next election to be the next Prime Minister of uh, England. Trust didn't work out, obviously, but the WEF not taking any chances, putting another one of their guys in there to at least run. And so if these guys have been working tirelessly to, uh, you know, revamp a system, and if the 2008 collapse was their first inclination, their first real big warning sign that things needed to be changed, I mean, pundits have been criticizing the, uh, the financial system for decades now. Even as far back as January 1988, the Rothschild's own Economist magazine published the magazine with this cover, The Phoenix, rising from a burning pile of U.S. fiat dollars. Get ready for a world currency. Again, guys, this was 1988. And it also gets me wondering, with this idea of the Hollywood pre-programming, I don't know if you guys have seen this movie, Sneakers, 1992. Okay, so note the date, that is important. 1992, I actually have not seen this movie. It stars Robert Redford, Dan Aykroyd, Ben Kingsley, at that time Ben Kingsley, not Sir Ben Kingsley, Mary McDonald, River Phoenix, Sidney Poitier, and David Strathern. Okay, and let me read you guys uh, a good synopsis here of what the movie is. The storyline, Martin Bishop is the head of a group of experts who specialize in testing security systems. When he is blackmailed by government agents into stealing a top secret black box, the team finds themselves embroiled in a game of danger and intrigue. After they recover the box, they discover that it has the capability to decode all existing encryption systems around the world, and that the agents who hired them didn't work for the government at all. Hmm, and this was from back in 1992. Well guys, in this movie, this coming from Shadow8373637, he noticed this, the movie sneakers video below at the four minute 17 second mark from this uh, particular YouTube video, it's just a clip from the movie, it shows XRP as part of the financial system. Now I have a clip of the movie here guys, I'm just going to play it with the uh, volume off to, uh, prevent a copyright strike. Check this out. The screen becomes clear and this is how they uh <laughs> this is how they made movies back then. When dealing with internet or computer technology, they needed to visualize it so it looks kind of funny from today's perspective, but here it is. Look at that. Federal Reserve Transfer Node, National Headquarters, Interbank Transfer Funds, and the International Telelink Access Code guys. Yeah, XRP. Now, it's one thing that XRP is listed in here, but uh, the fact that it even has to do with money, Federal Reserve Transfer Note, also Interbank Fund Transfer. Well, we know XRP is that currency that provides global liquidity to transfer funds. And again, this movie from 1992, so before the XRP ledger existed, right? Or am I wrong about that? Erica Gilbert bringing this up. Both came out in 1988. There are no coincidences, and uh, I don't know if you guys remember, and I know I've showed this patent on this channel before, from David Schwartz Enterprises. The original file date was August 25th, 1988, and uh, the patent date was actually from June 18th, 1991. So one year before this movie was released and uh, probably occurring during the production of this particular film. Let's also not forget what this was about. Security Pro finds his past coming back to haunt him. Okay, national security, the government, David Schwartz produced this patent in the late 80s. David Schwartz also worked for the NSA in and around the same time. I decided to go to David Schwartz's LinkedIn just to confirm that, guys. And you go down here right at the bottom here, David Schwartz Enterprises from January 1988 to January 1991. Invented a hierarchical system for distributing workloads over multiple computers. Handled interactions with the USPTO and obtained United States patents. This patent in particular, guys, 5025369, right up here, 5025369 for distributed ledger technology in and around the same time this Economist article did come out. And also in and around the same time this movie came out, 
perhaps projecting that XRP was going to be part of a new financial system through international telelink access. Things that make you go, hmm. And just as a little bonus Easter egg, River Phoenix was in the film. I'm just saying, that's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.